there's one more clip that I wanted to show you before we move on tonight. And it is rioters attacking the CNN headquarters there in Atlanta. Again, miles and miles away from Minneapolis. But that's what was going on in Atlanta. I mean, you haven't seen Atlanta under siege like this since Sherman. And here it is at the CNN headquarters. This was actually live on CNN. They were covering it from inside their own building. Take a look. We're here inside CNN Center. We're just in the last 10 minutes. Demonstrators have started to come up and down this thoroughfare of Marietta and break out windows of CNN Center. Uh, it was just a short time ago that they started shooting what appeared to be BBs at us. I was struck with a BB pellet. Uh, <laughs> It's unreal to witness here, Chris. This police line, we just saw an officer extracted. An officer was down. We don't know exactly how they were injured. Another officer here that was uh, standing on these steps took some glass in the arm. Uh, these demonstrators are ready to confront these uh, law enforcement officers. They've broken out the windows here and are continuing to throw objects. There's just another projectile fired. Appear to be a full water, water bottle. Uh, but there are officers that we can report. At least two officers have been injured. One of them, it appeared to be seriously injured. We've heard the chance of no justice, no peace. Another large object just thrown there at CNN. This is our home, Chris, you know. This is where we come to work every day. Journalists who are trying to tell the truth, trying to deliver information. It's one of the noble parts about society. And these demonstrators have decided to come here today to take out their frustration and their anger, not just on the police, but it seems on our CNN center as well. Uh, you know, I mean, this this is a crowd that came right. to confront police. They're angry. And we can't underscore, you know, on the cursory level, you see the violence that is happening and, and unfolding right in front of our cameras. They're here under the premise because a black man was killed by police. They want to hold police accountable. Their message, however, has taken a violent tone here. And we don't hear the mention of George Lloyd's name at all. No uh, you have some people are laughing. Some people are videotaping. They just threw something on fire, Chris, a firecracker. Yep. Something's on fire. Nick, you all right? You okay? You okay? You okay, guys? Now, with what you just saw there, that does not look like something that even would happen in America, but it is. And I really do think that a lot of it has to do with this infiltration of Antifa. Not saying that there aren't people there that aren't members of Antifa that maybe got caught up in the mob mentality, but I think that they are primarily, maybe not exclusively, but primarily the catalysts for this kind of violent behavior. But what's really fascinating about all this is that, remember, that when it comes to CNN, that CNN is one that is very, very much on the left. These people don't care. In fact, the only thing that I can really help you understand exactly what this is, because I think the stakes here are a lot higher than anybody really realizes, this is the moment in Revenge of the Sith, the third Star Wars movie, where Anakin Skywalker takes down Count Dooku. And you remember he has him there, he winds up chopping off both of his hands. Count Dooku is defenseless. Dooku's a villain. He's a bad guy. And he's sitting there and Anakin is about to take him out. And the Emperor there says, kill him. Now, remember, Anakin doesn't know that that's the Emperor. He doesn't know that that's Palpit. He doesn't know that that's Darth Sidious. But Dooku does. And you can see the expression on, by the way, Christopher Lee, fantastic actor. It's a shame that he's no longer with us playing Count Dooku there. You can see the look of betrayal on Christopher Lee's face, and he plays it off very well because it's just subtle enough that Anakin's character wouldn't be able to figure out that that is a look of betrayal. I mean, the the guy did just tell him to kill somebody. So the, the shock would be understandable. But if you understand that Sidious is actually the, the Dark Lord behind all of it, you understand that Dooku looking over there and, and seeing his master, see, that's when the light bulb goes off. And I don't think that that's actually happened for CNN, but in this particular moment, CNN is Count Dooku. And what just happened, the, the moment that should have made the light bulb go off, is that Dooku there realizes, oh, I'm not the plan. He's the plan. Darth Sidious doesn't want me to be ruling the universe at his side. He wants this guy to be doing that. I was just a useful idiot. 
I'm the one that's being used here. And I'm hoping, frankly, I have very little faith that CNN is going to understand it and see it this way. What just happened to CNN and what I hope CNN realizes, you're just the useful idiot. See, you're the one that's been apologizing and justifying things that have been done by people like Black Lives Matter and like Antifa. By the way, that broadcast happens during Chris Cuomo's show. And you may remember, if you have a memory that goes back more than a couple years, that it was Chris Cuomo, of all of the CNN anchors, that went the furthest in defending Antifa. Basically saying, see, their violence isn't as bad as other people's violence, because at least they're fighting on the right side. Chris Cuomo was doing the apology tour. And, and trying to explain to people why it's okay to think that Antifa being violent isn't, you know, quite as bad as other groups being violent. And I'm hoping what happened here is that CNN will finally have that aha moment that like, oh wait, they'll kill us too. These are violent, radical socialists. And they view CNN as much a part of the establishment as Fox News or any conservative news outlet out there. They will kill you and not think twice about it. I mean, I could give literary analogies all day long on this. But the point is, CNN just got betrayed, and I hope that they understand that that's what just happened. That they're looking up and they're looking around and realizing, oh, the, these guys don't have any use for me. See, we thought we were the ones that were using them. We thought we were the ones that were going to be in power. And, and when this violent overthrow happens, that we would be one of the select few and that we'd be fine. Nope. Turns out that you're just as expendable as everybody else. And I'm saying this not because I'm enjoying it. Even though I don't have much love for CNN. I don't want anything terrible to happen to them. And even though I think that they're woefully misguided, they are still Americans. They're still media people, just like I am. This is a fight that we all should be on the same side with. That we don't want a violent communist revolution. You see, CNN thought that these were useful idiots, just like the DNC did. They thought that they were going to use Antifa, and that's the reason that they downplayed their violence. They made excuses for them. They basically said that, well, we'll provide some cover for them because those are people that are likely to vote Democrat. And, and if nothing else, they're energizing the base. They're, they're you know, vehemently anti-Trump. They don't like conservatives. We can use them. We can have them on our side. By, by the way, not unlike what I think originally went through Donald Trump's head with people like the alt-right. You don't screw around with these people. You don't invite terrorists into your camp. CNN has coddled people like this. They've made excuses for people like this for years now. And I'm hoping what they realize at this moment is, oh, we're not immune from their violence either. They're perfectly okay with taking us down too. Frankly, I don't have a lot of faith that CNN's going to see it that way, but... I, I hope that they do. And I genuinely do applaud President Trump for denoting these evil savages, these anarchists, these people that want a violent overthrow of the government as a terrorist organization. They may have different motives than people like Afghanistan, or uh, not Afghanistan, the Taliban, like ISIS, their motives may not be some kind of religious war, but their tactics are roughly the same. They do want to overthrow the system. They do want to take control of the levers of power, and they want to use violence and terror to do it. Ergo, they are a terrorist organization. Now, effectively, I don't know exactly what this means, and what I am afraid of, and genuinely afraid of, is that this winds up being something that makes it easier for the surveillance state to spy on innocent Americans. I genuinely hope that does not happen, and I'm going to try to do my best to be vigilant to make sure that isn't happening 
to regular American citizens. We don't need more ways and more loopholes to avoid the Fourth Amendment. But at the same time, there's no question that these people are terrorists. They specifically use fear and intimidation and violence to try to get their political will carried out. That's a terrorist organization, no matter how you try to paint it up. Now, Antifa is not all that centrally organized, and so I'm not even sure that you would be able to enforce a lot of this stuff. But the overall point is that, if nothing else, just symbolically labeling these people terrorist organizations, and especially considering how they go after people on the right and left, and they're willing to let the heads roll, just like they did in the French Revolution, I'm hoping that will shock some people awake and realize what we're actually fighting against the destruction of our country. I hope that some people finally realize that. We all have to realize that the stakes here are much higher than I think even most of the players in the game really understood that they were. CNN being chiefest among them, I, I hope that there is at least some semblance of sanity. I, I don't think that they're going to suddenly become you know, ardent conservatives or patriots or any of that. I am hoping that they'll realize that you, you can't play footsie with Antifa. I'm hoping, if nothing else, that may be the silver lining to all of this villainy that has taken place over the past few days. I hope that is true. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.